control the pace on Mirage on T side, you can just run away with the half. Well, let's see if they're going to be able to do that. Already leaning towards that A bomb site, but it looks like they want to make a bit of noise. In fact, they're going to commit a smoke and maybe a second one. So they're selling this double smoke flashbangs to follow, pretending like we're going to be rushing that B bomb site. Get ready for it. But in fact, it's over on the A bomb site. No one's rotating out of that though. Rez and Linus actually staying pretty put. Good kill from Hampers to take down Amanek and. Yeah, this is so smart for NIP. They make the jump for it. Nice information play. Linus with a straight headshot to take down Hunter. And they have been pulled out in the open. The bomb is committed now. Double kill and double pistols on Rez. It is going to be Jax on his own. One versus five. They saw that coming from miles away. NIP, brilliant start here on Mirage. And the cool thing about it as well is that uh, it leans right into what our analysts were saying going into this match where that that B apartment's pop is G2's bread and butter. As yeah. mentioned, what do we look at? We look at Amanek yeeting himself out of B apartments. They're making it look as much as possible like it's a B execute, so much so that they're committing Amanek into the mix, right, with his movement of throwing himself out the window. Yeah, and listen, we talked about this a little bit on Inferno with how much you can get done with throwing a single smoke to a bomb site. That was double smoke, double flashbang with a guy jumping into B and nobody moved on that A bomb site. That's, that takes some commitment, especially if you're down a whole map and you're in front of the home crowd. That's exactly where you make those mistakes. Pistol round as well, you're so incentivized to rotate out of there. I love the fact that NIP stayed put and the fact that Linus got that double kill, just all the more powerful. Second half gonna be coming up now, and um, we'll see. G2, they have a pistol on Nico, but not just any pistol, somewhere. Oh, oh, Who's oh, that oh. deep? They go with the D, go, yep, oh, there you go. You Speak wanna be of careful. the devil, triple spray from Rez though. Quad spade, quad kill from Rez. Where is Hunter? Can Rez get this kill? Hunter wants to die, yes! Hunter dies to another player, doesn't give Rez another ace. <laughs> yeah, keep those away from him. But Just you saw, you got, you got a little bit of a taste of why you, you don't want to face that Deagle. He, yeah. I mean, he had a chance even to get a third one in there. So a pretty good double. Either way, it's a third round. And we've got a couple of Galils, three AKs, Decent amount of nades. G2 are going to be dangerous in this round, although they are against all M4s. Not a single submachine gun in play on the CT side. Oh, a single a solitary HE left behind and spawn for the rotate. Nice HE to top mid. Does some damage to Nexa. He catches some shrapnel. And in the meantime, Nico, yep. He's just pluff, you know, plumping the pillows up here, getting comfy. That's his spot. Palace on A. Just chilling out up there. And he plays one of the most important roles on this T side for G2 because so long as he stays alive, they always have the option to wrap back to A. And if they decide to hit B, he's the backstab element. So as so yeah. long as Nico stays alive over here, Nexa has options. If he goes down early, that really screws that really screws up his team. Yeah, they have to. I mean, they lose half the map if that happens. So you're absolutely right. Amanek near the bomb. That. Really clearing out middle slowly. This is um, it's a very relaxed way of playing Mirage to begin with. They do have some grenades still left. Actually, three smokes and a Molotov as well. You want to be careful here. Rez is down in Sandwich inside of the A-bomb site. So they've got a pretty good sort of a, a, a bit of a triangle setup at the A-site, which is um, potentially what they might need, in fact, because it looks like this is going to be a connector play. The timing here for Device. Almost has it, flash into the middle. They're gonna know what that is. They know that that's a peak, and now they've all been spotted. They need to go. They're gonna fight Device, they'll take a kill. Rez, though, down in Sandwich. A lot to handle, and he can't get more than the one kill. Amanek will take him down. What a slow round from G2, but it's actually working out brilliantly for them here. Two versus three in their favor in the afterplot. Next up with the headshot on Linus, leaving Plopski on his own. Wow, they just, they strangled them slowly in that A bomb site took their time about it as well. Slow group up into mid, up into connector, and again, Nico alive, always going to be a threat. Eventually they have to deal with him. And so him drawing attention to himself gives that moment, that brief instant of opportunity for G2 to pounce and push forward onto the bomb side and swamp that defense. So well done on Nico's part and G2, I mean, this is not what Nip were hoping for here, that G2 could win their first buy round, because now G2 gets to start putting the pressure on early, rather than Nip really starting to run away on that CT side. True. Getting a bit toasty up here. Think about the timing of that flash to set up device to go for the peak. If it's five seconds earlier, 
They're probably all blind, and Device will get a kill, fall back, but even more than that, he'll realize how many people are actually coming up the middle. That's a, that's a very hard push to hold when you've got four people like that, because normally, in any kind of an A attack, you're expecting for there to be more of an element that goes A ramp or A palace. So you're, if you're Rez or anyone else in that bomb site, you're looking for those other players thinking, why are they not showing up? And eventually, four out of five are just coming up for that mid connector. So it's actually really hard to read, especially, uh, especially when you see them that late in the round. Here we go, Nico lightning fast into the ladder room. That is a classic Mirage play. Don't get to see it nearly enough though. I feel like it's gone out of style, but it has so much utility from in here. Korea getting quite a bit of uh, information there as well, not spotting anybody in mid like that. It's good to build off of, could set themselves up for a quick play onto this B site. Chax is kind of jumping around trying to get the information. Hampus needs to stay alive at all costs at this point. If he goes down early, this is going to get dire. I agree. Device getting a bit curious in the middle. That's the power of being in there so early on. Oh, Hampus, we've seen him hit some great eagle shots. He's going to have to come up in a massive way here. There's Jax down, we need more! Another headshot to bring it through, but he can't find the third! That is still a job well done on Hampus, and now Linus trying to see if he can follow up where his teammate left off. Nico, though, running out there to take them down. And that's gonna be a bomb plan. It is a two-on-two, -two, and they have a kit on Plopski, and even a Molotov. Ooh. Yeah, there's options here going into this retake for NIP. They're quick enough. The bomb has only just been planted, and they're already in a split position. Oh, there's a crazy world here where they find Nexa and Molotov out Nico, and there's nothing he could do at that point in time to win back the round. But they're going to have to be quick about it. There's the flash set up. There's Nexa gone. Now, do they know where Nico is? Plopski, he's got that Molotov in hand. Oh. He's going to take down Rez, though, Nico. So there's the grenade, and he runs through Nico. He reads and he knows what a next level play. He knew that he was going to be losing the round if he just stayed on the other side. The HE will almost kill him, but not quite. And he takes the round and ace to win the second one on the board for G2. What a god. You got to get respect to Nico, man. <laughs> you got to get respect to Nico. And I heard some cheering from the G2 corner. A bit of booze, too, though. <laughs> a few booze. Uh, Nip or Nip fans are not going to be pleased with that, but what a round from Nico getting into the middle, into ladder room, catching out the rotates. The Vice had no idea that he was there, and that started the ball rolling for Nico. And of course, he's going to make that snap decision to run through the Molotov. He's not going to get fooled. Plays that perfectly. Wow. Puts him up onto seven kills here going into the fifth round. Think about how far in advance he has to read what's going to happen in that moment. He doesn't have a lot of time to really think about that. If he doesn't make it through that Molotov, he's just going to be stuck on the other side. Absolutely brilliant. Two to two. And G2 fighting back in a big way. An ace on Nico. He was out of control on Inferno. And now he's just continuing. He's not slowing down. He wants to be in that semi-final. That's looking good at the moment. They are very, very low on uh, money on the NIP side. So couple of upgraded pistols, but not much more. And G2 are not leaving much to chance either. They're once again putting the Samage Hunter sort of deep in the map, but he's playing a bit on his own. Actually going to be running into the bomb side. That could be a bit dangerous. The Mac 10, also the UMP will take care of business though. And now they have the bomb side. They can just yeah. rotate back. And they have, exactly. It happened early enough where they could get that information from Hunter. He's just told them that the bomb side is wide open on the A site. And you immediately saw Amanek just stop, freeze with the bomb. Yeah. and just do a 180 and start running back to T-Spawn. They have time for the rotation. They'll be able to get onto the A side and get that bomb planted, and they don't need to take any risks walking into a weird stack. And so, look at how they're checking, nice. they're checking everything. Hunter's checked the entire A bomb site. Nexus has been playing in middle. He is slowly clearing every corner. They're being so careful right now, G2, to make sure that they don't make any silly mistakes and, and leave something uh, unchecked for an NIP player to do something Ooh. crazy. Nice headshot from Jax. Good triple, and G2 going to be on a third round. They will take an NIP really early on in this game. Well, they're really putting the pressure on NIP very early on in this game, considering NIP's run on that CT side of Inferno. G2 are just like, right, none of that. We need, uh, we need to put a halt to that real quick and not let you guys get comfortable here. But after that round of Eco, the Vice has an AWP. There's a decent nade count here for Nip. And I'm curious if Nip decided to try and make some kind of power play here. Stop getting beat up and actually try and take the fight to G2. I feel like you need to start challenging, challenging them. You can see Hampus in the window already trying to take a peek, putting some spray through that smoke, hoping to get lucky. No targets, though. Hunter. He's DP in here again. If he finds an opening, it could, it could just set off this B avalanche. They could just wipe out the bomb site. Mm -hmm. One good kill. 
Here comes the smoke for the setup. Plopski's back here. A little bit of a gap, just a pixel jump. He's looking for it. Hunter with the kill, taking down Hampus. What a strong start, but they are slowed down. The nades here will make sure they can't straight rush it, which is probably what they would have loved to have done. And Hunter is just so effective in the middle, almost winning the fight against Rez. Aminem makes the jump down, but a clean shot from Plopski, and they're starting to bring it back in. I think, wow, laser precision from Linus. Leaves just two, Nico and Nexer. Nico's got that AWP. I don't think they know that it's been in play yet, but it doesn't matter. Device will find him. And that is a critical answer for NIP straight back into the game. Brilliant shot from Device there to close it as well. Nico thinking he could get frisky with Device, not happening. That was a perfect crouch peek. And we are going to get a timeout called by NIP, interestingly enough. They like to go for the tactical timeout. So Threat already feeling like they need to make some adjustments here. I mean, they've already gone ahead and shut down one of G2's clear go-to strategies, which is that B hit. And so if G2 are going to start feeling limited in their strategy here, this is definitely going to be a feel-good moment for NIP. You start connecting those dots, all of a sudden you've got a CT half to start, to, to start getting excited about, whereas on G2's side of things, they have to go back to the drawing board here and be like, okay, back to the playbook. What do we got? Nico looking unenthused. Yeah, yeah I think the, the tension, it must just be crazy inside of really both teams at the moment. Yeah, there we go. They're going to buy on the, uh, oh, a little bit of, a, I think we're just going to have one player reconnecting and then we should be good to go once again. So the tactical timeout might have turned into a tech timeout in the meantime. I, I mean, I, I don't really mind the idea that they try and go for, for a little bit of a break here in IMP because there's so much pressure on. So getting a little bit of a relief and having threat come in for a moment to just sort of, you know, talk to them and make sure that they remember um, just what they practice, because like I think the desk was pointing this out, and Duncan was making this point, right? They could have probably guessed this was going to be a map in this best of three. That's not the surprise. So, so you know, they have a lot of tape to go off of. Probably a lot of plans in the in the back of their minds. But now it's time for it. And Nip have got all of the support staff as well. I mean, yeah. there's not only threat, but they've got the the performance coach, they've got the analyst, they've got everything that they need. They've even got the camera crew that are following them around, putting up those YouTube videos all the time. So I mean. Like, these guys are on point right now as a team. So they have everything they need to succeed. Same could be said for G2, though. It's not like they're lacking. They have a coach who's on point. They have the firepower. They have the analysts. They have everything. The support structure from the team. Yeah. Well, we're so, back. Yeah, we're back into, into it, it now. CT side, NIP. Let's see. Seventh round. Starting to, starting to get back early into it, NIP. That has to be a good sign. And Plopski. You said earlier, and I think you're right, we'd like to see some initiative out of NIP for them to take a little bit more of a fight to G2. And that kind of a move for Plopski, that is exactly it. That means Linus can walk out of the B bomb site, start to connect over towards the middle or even the A bomb site. It is a risk, right? This leaves Catwalk open. If they somehow were to smoke off window and connect her and just rush the Catwalk, that would be the killer move for G2, but it's hard for them to know that. Right now, just fighting for a little bit of mid control at the moment. Yeah, the nade battle going on. Nexa dropping that molly. He drops one into connector, instantly gets responded to, and Nexa with the headshot on Hampus to kick off the round. That standoff. This is a, such a slow and methodical first half for G2. It's actually suffocating for NIP. I think they're, they're expecting maybe something a little bit more high-powered with some of these fights that they can sort of brawl. That's what happened on Inferno so much, but this... They're creeping around. They're just setting up individual fights all the time. Jax was, okay, Plopsy was close enough to hear Jax run away to get that yeah. bomb. So this is actually allowing Rez to rotate back over towards A. Here's the big flank coming in. This is going to ruin the G2 push. Nip are ready for it. You're absolutely right. They've got a brilliant setup here. 25 seconds. Nexa, maybe the only one that could do something. If the bomb goes down, he can try and stop the defuse, but they need to get the bomb down first. Rushing out of the ramp, and Jax, what an entry! Just runs onto the bomb site. Next, this device. Jax with a double entry, and he's nearly tapping away the third player there. Rez, not much he could do here. Eight seconds on the clock, and there's Nexa with the late look into middle. It's gonna be the round for G2, and it's so clean. It's so perfect. You get one kill. You had the early info, you knew where they were going, and you get one kill out of that. Man on your screen there in the foreground, Jax, what a monster. Double entry straight out onto the A site. That is the feel-good round for G2, where you know that Nip had you countered, and you still plowed through that defense. That's yeah. going to just build. So yeah, you can see Threat's face. There it is. The other, it's the counterpart. You know, Threat's face says it all, the frustration right there. You know that's a round that you should have locked down if you're an IP. Super understandable, because 
we, you could see how that was all going to play out, but they're so good at taking these angles. I'm actually just so impressed. It's really slow, but they just crouch right in for the straight headshot, and you could see NIP, for whatever reason, not able to respond in time to some of those shots. Now we're back to some more upgraded pistols. Interestingly, the dualies. Don't see those too often. But it is a, a concerning lead that's building for G2 right now. At least if you're on that NIP side. Oh, the flank. Oh, there's the spot. Aminex got the timing down perfectly. Not a whole lot the device can hope to do in that situation. And they still have bomb control as well on G2 side, so they can start setting themselves up. Bombs rotating back, and yeah, this is going to get uh, pretty spicy for Rez in a moment here. Ooh. <laughs> That's actually a pixel perfect pop flash to turn into that. It almost didn't make it around the corner at all. Rez with a deagle, and it's a nice attempt. Close range there to try and get the headshot, but he's going to get taken down. Popski walking into the middle. You gotta be careful. I mean, now they've got mostly USPs left, so unlikely they could do a lot of damage. And again, even at this point in the game, right, five versus three against pistols, they're so careful, G2. They're so measured. They're not running onto the bomb site crazily with the bomb out or anything. They are checking every single inch of that bomb site before they even think about planting the bomb. This is a, a really wild level of focus from G2. You've got to give it to them. The brutal shot thing is, is that right now they're conditioning Nip to this slow play, and at any moment, Nip have to have it in the back of their head, at any moment, G2 could flip it completely and go for a rush. And that could be devastating for NIP, because if NIP are trying to cheat in any sort of way and sort of like hold on to nades for yep. later into the round, trying to get a little bit of an advantage, and G2 just come plowing through, because you're expecting them to play late in the round, and all of a sudden, G2 are within 30 seconds on your bomb side in your face. Yeah. That can ruin you. So G2 have got that now, where they can, they've got that in the back pocket. They can they can decide, we're going to speed it up at any point in time now. And it must be the worst as well when you're a whole map down and, and you're falling behind in this one too. You want that straight fight where you're just battling everywhere, because that actually does take your attention away from the situation that you're in. But instead, we might get it now. Yeah, actually, you're right. Sneaking out, Nico, looking for the entry here with the AK. He's just crept down. He's got so much control already. Device, he has to get a kill, but instead, Nexa will find him with the AK. Rez is going to fall down next. Oh, God, they're so accurate right now on this T side. And Hampus, it's not worth it. It's perfect. I mean, that's exactly the play. You just go for a bunch of slow rounds, slow yeah. round, slow round. You know what? Let's just speed it up and let's just go right out onto the bomb site. We don't even throw any grenades to announce our presence. <laughs> we literally just walk out onto the bomb site. Surprise, surprise, here we are. Get two kills and nip. At that point, you just look completely flat-footed, like just confused. You don't really know how to be able to handle that situation because the only way you're getting out of that situation if by some act of God, you get nothing but headshots. Yeah. Late Ooh. to try and get some exits here is Hampus. Maybe he felt like he couldn't actually escape because he didn't control the window either, so he might have just felt like he was stuck. It's going to be the round for G2, 6-3 to three in their favor. That is a... All right, he had a smoke. I was going to say that would have been a really cool play. But yeah, in the lead once again, in a big way here, our G2. T side of Mirage as well. Things are looking crisp right now. It's so scary because this creeping around the corners and just getting the shots, I mean, half of them are just crouching shots at angles. They're, they're just deadly accurate right now. Here it is. Okay, Threat having a bit of a chat right now with the lads. It's a good time to call the tactical timeout because it really feels like G2 are starting to pick up some steam here. And this is going into a full buy coming in from NIP. They, they have to cut corners with Plopsky. He's got an MP9. The rest of them are fully bought up. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Getting back into it now. The timeout has gone away. They will at least have the AWP on device, but we haven't really seen any kind of action out of him that, that makes a difference. He's got two kills so far in nine rounds, so that is just going to have to change. Back into it with the 10th round. Let's get it underway. G2, they're going to be leaning towards the A side. Rez is playing in shadow, devices over a connector. Oh, and up in the apartments, Rez actually. He came up to try and take the fight, but Nico was ready. And he's been waiting for that fight for a long time. Device, he gets a kill, but Amanek is there for the return. Simultaneous kills here for the opposing all players. And now it's a three on four. And that's great. They don't mind that at all, G2. And loose look, Hunter living up to his name. He's out in the wilds right now, Anders. He's on a track. He's clearing it all out. And then he's going to set all the traps everywhere. Yes. Collect some ninja pelts. 
because right now he's getting out onto the bomb site. Nobody is there, and G2 haven't even committed the bomb to A. Yep, they could walk it back. Jax is a little bit deep, but he can actually just stay by the benches if he wants to. Right around the corner, Hampus. He almost got flashed to, to death there. Hunter's kept pushing. He's all the way in the market, and they're not expecting it. A little bit of a failed spray, but it doesn't matter. He'll clean it up anyway and smoke it off. And I mean, they are just outplaying NIP in a grotesque fashion right now, G2. This is so impressive. Two versus four. They don't really have the health or anything. It's not even clear where they could save the guns right now. There's no safe spot on the map. Oh, wait. They might catch them here. This would be the only way. The only way would be Hampers getting a double kill here, but he's just going to walk up with his back turn. Ooh. He's no idea where to look. Nico will take another one, and it's seven to three in favor of G2. What a power performance this is. Yeah, terrific, uh, terrific performance from G2. Utterly dominant on Inferno, at least in that first half from Nico, where they were able to close it out in the second half. And now on the T side of Mirage, they are controlling the pace. They're controlling, they, they, the, the essential thing here is that they're controlling the pace. Yeah. They started off real slow, and then it's just even more lethal when you speed it up a little bit. Then you can go back to slow again, you're right? You're <laughs> setting, you're deciding what's going to happen in these rounds. You're dictating the pace on C2 right now, and it feels, this is where you have to just feel so good if you're next up, because you're always going to be a step ahead. Hampus yep. is always having to play catch up. He's always trying to guess ahead, like, oh, what, what are they going to do next? Whereas you're the one who gets to decide. You're just like, well, sweet, that's worked. Now let's do this. Such a tough position to be in. They've had a couple of chances, especially early on in this half, where they, they were starting to answer back. G2 just looked like they are on another level in this game. Hampus, quite able to get the kill. Hunter shows up in the middle. He'll take down Rez. They don't really have that much more to work with. And it, we even mentioned this even during the, uh, the Legend stage, how, how much less we're seeing these decisive Deagle rounds from the past where you just get a bunch of one-taps and suddenly win an odd round. Unless that's... your name is Refresh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That was crazy. But right now, they need one of those rounds here in IP. They, they need to find that because they're actually lacking behind the big way. Setting up for a bit of a B split with only Nexa making his way through the middle, but that's probably going to be enough. Amanek with the jump down and completely blind is Plopsky. Fantastic. Textbook opening. Nico on the flashes. Amanek, he's got all the space. It's like chef's kiss when you see that. Yeah. Just, mm, that's so good. Amanek just makes that look so easy now. And he gets the opening kills behind that flash. Jax with the flank on device. And it's eight to three on the T side. And here's the second time out getting called by NIP on this CT side. Threat deciding enough is enough. He needs to step in once more here going into this next buy round and electing to go for a different strategy this time, NIP. We haven't seen that double AWP much, so. Time to get it out, and let's see what we can do here. More timeouts, yeah. And they are, they're digging deep right now on the NIP side. How do you get back into this? How do you, how do you find that role that'll just slowly get you back in? Eight to three right now. Second tactical timeout called, and a double orb in play. In terms of kills, Rez had a bunch of kills early on, but he's kind of been stuck at 11 for a little bit here, and the rest are quite far behind, so. It is looking grim. They're gonna need they're gonna need to get the crowd back in action. They're gonna need to get everybody fired up once again because it is getting a little bit quiet, a little bit dim in here. Sweden, are you still here? There it is. There we go. They were silent, but they need to wake up as well. Pampas, strong kill on Amanek. He goes down, and so does Hunter. This is a defense. Pampas on the triple, and Jack starting to answer back. Can he do more? A second headshot on Plovsky. Oh, he swung it right back. Nico and Jax now. Two versus three to try and see if they can win this round back. What a steal it would be for devices there to drop the star. Nico is gone, and now it's on Jax. Did he get the bomb plant? It's actually right behind him. It's a shame that he didn't pick it up in transit here, but he gets the shot on device. And with the smoke up on top, he's got so much time. Oh, if he wins this, what a heartbreak it would be. He's stuck all the way back here, and he is giving them the space to make a mistake. He's saying, come on, the pressure is on you. Take a step forward. One misstep, and I'm going to steal this round back. 50 seconds on the clock now. He's waiting it out. Why not? Not quite sure where they are. Now, they do have him boxed in. Oh, there's a chance. He taps once, but Res will take him down. Oh, man, it takes a lot. They get, that was a triple opening from Hampus, and that round still looked close. 
bonkers, bonkers close. Jax is a true threat. Just the way that he's able to turn that into a 1v2. But uh, Device needs Nico to off more often because half of Device's kills are dueling Nico with the AWP. <laughs> so whatever Device needs to do to get Nico, Nico just drop Nico and off, and you'll start getting some kills out of Device so far in this first half because uh, it's tough. They're hard to come by. But this is a fourth round on the board now for Nip. So important. Uh, G2 are filthy rich. They have way too much money. There's no problem at all for them. They're going to get a full buy. So the pressure is still on the ninjas. They need to play perfectly from here on out. But now G2 are aware that this is an issue that they're going to have to deal with. This double AWP, how do they address it? It's so hard to try and put yourself in their mind space and think of the pressure here. They finally win another round. It's, it's, not, it's not a convincing win. It's not the kind of win that says, here we go. That's the formula, right? Triple kill for Hampers, sure. Krieg picked up on Nico. Pulling out all the stops right now. Oh, this is one way to deal with it. Jump down, Hampers. He's almost had the angle there. Now the pistol instead. He's going to call in some backup. Ooh, he might be lucky to live. Well, the, the, I mean, the potential for a rush is one way to deal with an AWP. If you can get out, it's all tempo, right? If you can just get out ahead of him, then he's behind. If he misses that first shot, you can really put the pressure on Hampus. So there was a chance there briefly for G2. Such a close run thing there. Hampus is wiping the sweat off his brow off that, after that one. Back checking middle. I agree that that could have gone horribly wrong. If he, if he jumps out of the window, he, he basically has to hit a quick scope or a no scope, and then if that doesn't work, he's dead. Under a minute now, Foreman top mid. I like that you two have the gumption to go for it, though. You yeah. know, that they're just like, right, just go charge him real Hell quick. Hell yes. You know, he misses the shot, cool. And if he doesn't, well, fine. You know, we force some utility, and we, you know, we make sure that Nip stay nervous. It's really cool. That's a great call coming in from G2. But look at how much mid control they're getting. In IP are so far back, they don't know. This is looking like a split towards the B bomb site from the catwalk. Hampus is going to have to step up once again. 30 seconds on the clock. They're going to start to make the win. Popsky, he actually read it. He knew, but he still goes down to Hunter, and they get wiped out. Not, no defense at all on that B bomb site. And that's in spite of the fact, again, they had a pretty good read. They had that AWP up there, but it just falls apart. It is a ninth round now for G2. And again, it is that slow, constricting style. They just, <laughs> they're just winning all those fights. It could be anywhere at that point, right? Once you get that guy into mid-window like that, you're just going to just cut that defense in half. And then they're on their own. They're isolated, and they have to worry about so many angles. Perfect stuff coming in here from G2. It just feels so slow and measured. Although, I, I say that, this round, they did try and rush B. It would have worked if they just got Amanek out. It would have worked. Yeah, but the fact that they were able to, to call off the rush, oh. go back to the slow style. <laughs> oh, man. He caught the flashbang as hard as you can. Lena's trying to stay alive here with the M4. That's all that they have. Oh, what a rough game this is. 14th round is coming up. G2 are ahead 9 to 4. They are so close right now to that semifinal. Big steps in the right direction. We need to see some fist bumps here from NIP. We need to start seeing them rally up here as a team because. They are getting smashed right now in this first half, nine to four. <laughs> How do you get a team fired up behind this? You can't really get around it. I mean, at some point, you're just going to have to start rallying. There's Device chiming in, wins the duel versus Nico. Just, if Device can just run into Nico every round, you're guaranteed an opening kill. Yeah, he's got his number. Krieg with a little bit of a, of a slower rate of fire on that one, so probably made a big difference. But. As to your point earlier, that's another attempt to change the pace. Just try, throw a little bit out there and see, oh, can we catch someone there? Yeah. Okay, maybe not, but we Does still have stick. the middle. And remember how they did this earlier, the four-man stack in connector. They're going to try and do it again and just surprise NIP on the bomb site. Nice shot from Rez. He's going to be able to pick that one up with an assisted flashbang from Linus. And now they're slowed down so much, G2, and that's never a good sign when you're trying to get out of the middle like this. Pretty good shot from Rez on the follow-up, a double for him, and that leaves Amanek. One versus four. And losing the orb not going to be a big deal. They can easily rebuy that on the side of G2. Now, maybe NIP could pick it up, and that would be annoying, but yeah. It's going to be Rez triple on him. He's doing a lot of work on this first half. He's up to 15 kills. That's pretty impressive. He's actually the top fragger in the server. 
And this is as good as it gets uh, for NIP because they've saved three AKs behind the AWPs as well, and they had mon enough money to get another op. So fully bought up on both sides is what we're about to see here between both of these teams. And it's really interesting how just how many timeouts they're committing to this, uh, to this half. As in G2 now, the ones going for the timeout. Yeah, they want everything they can get out of it. Like, nine is, isn't even enough. We they want can more. get 10 rounds. They can get 10 rounds. That'll be fascinating. If they can get 10 rounds, that's really going to set them up in the second half, obviously. And it's going to be incredibly demoralizing for NIP. I'm actually so... I'm awestruck by G2's level up throughout this tournament. Just stage after stage, playing better and better all the time. It is, it is exactly how you want to plan your tournament if you can, but I mean, usually that plan gets a lot of bumps along the way and it doesn't really work out in that fashion. Right now, it's looking so solid. Nico playing outside of A again with the Creek. He's going to be running for the smoke to try and take a bit of a fight out there. He almost had the timing. That's kind of dangerous. Again, just trying to hit the random the shot there, but Device. There we go. Take down Hunter. There's Device. Patience as well. The trigger discipline doesn't give away his position. Just waits for them to walk into his range of view there. That was sick. Great discipline from the Opper. With a minute 20 now, G2, they're stomping around, and Nip are close enough to hear that as well. So they know full well that uh, G2 are in control of mid at this point. Jax is weak. He's just playing that solo position as well. But if he finds the, the right timing or hears a noise and feels like he can go for it, again, one kill could change this round and bring it back in G2's favor. They're bringing the bomb back. Deco lurking in middle, so you can kind of tell what's coming next. 50 seconds on the clock. And Plovsky probably feeling, yeah, you know, Hamper's going to start to make his way back. That's a nice jump. He knows. I think Jax might have seen it as well, but just the fact that he's aware. Be careful, Plovsky. Don't give this one away. Everyone is walking up behind here. He just has to stay alive. There's the kill. Rez will take down Nico in the middle. So now it's all up to the defense in B. Hampus and Plopsky standing tall. And leading Nexa entirely on his own. Good double kill for Plopsky. That's a 9-6 to six finish in the first half in favor of G2. Yeah, what a great recovery. To work with him. That double HE, I'm assuming, is for a B rush. It's really common on this map in the pistol round. So they're just going to be ready to blow them up. And NIP might, might give them this one. Oh, they slow it down. But still, want to be real careful about this. Let's jump more and more. Oh, okay. ho, ho. Just going to blow up the chance. Yeah, Plopsky. He'll be happy that he waited. In the meantime, a little bit of clear information getting here in the underpass uh, towards mid. Trying to suss out what the setup is going to look like here. Nico is in T spawn. He's gone deep on this one. Jax is clearing out the A apartments. Oh, that's a nice gush. Amanek, very low on health. Now they're going to be three men pushing through. Oh my god, they're just completely flanking them. I don't think I've seen this before. Tries to see if they can find the early kill, but they actually missed a shot. Nice flick from Hampus. He makes it a double, and Hunter will be found as well. And that destroys the B defense. Nico and Jax now, two versus five. Three-man entry through window into the market, into the B bomb site. That is overpowering. They started the fight back just a bit, but there should be really no way to do this here. Jax. He's expecting for a second player to be there, and he's right, but it's in the one corner that he didn't check. The device will take him down. Now it's all on Nico. One versus three. He gets caught by Linus, and they win that pistol round. Suddenly, you mentioned it. They needed it. They, they needed it. They absolutely had to get that pistol to have a shot in the second half, I think, because if G2 got, the, got to just start going straight into their CT side, their T side is stronger, G2, but their CT side is nothing to sneeze at. This is just... Talk about crazy for Hampus. Instant death, just jumping straight out there. And yeah, this is now just going to be shaping up so wonderfully for NIP. Yeah, that is the that's the start. We're one step in the right direction, but we've seen the level of focus out of G2. How much they they were careful not to throw away rounds, even when they had five versus threes against USPs. They were so focused, and that has to be true for NIP as well. This is still a dangerous round calling attention to the fact that Nico has that deagle, don't give him the opportunity here. You have to find a way to make sure that you can trade the kills and not fall victim to that pistol. It would be just like Nico to just start banging heads off right now, though. Oh. You rang with the deagle blaze. I mean, he is thinking about it. Smoke will make it a little bit more difficult. The bomb is now up in the A Palace, so Nexa going to maybe be the first point of contact here. 
Still, it gives a chance for Nico to use the Deagle even at the jungle. Under a minute. Started to sneak through. Smoke is fading. Oh, it's just covering them in the middle, but Rez. Strong headshot with the Galil, and that should seal the deal. Nexer is now on his own inside of the bomb site, and there shouldn't be much of a chance for him to do anything here. He's going to get one good headshot on Rez, but they're all coming for him up on the flat toe. He's actually got a chance there for a second kill, but they'll take him down. 35 seconds, and bomb is being planted. They are not going to risk running through the smoke, so that should seal the deal here in favor of NIP. Yep, and this is what we're seeing of more and more where G2, they go for the force fire, the rat, the, the the team goes for the force buy. It doesn't look like the retake is going to be possible, and so you just back out. You call on, call it off, back off, save the Kevlar, save the pistols, and save any grenades you have for the next round, so you have a chance at it. Maybe somebody drops a deagle for Nico, and we can see if he can go round two. You feel the tension even in that round, even just the one deagle kill, and immediately you can see NIP very apprehensive, really worried about what's going to be happening next. I can't really blame them. They need to get through that phase of the game where they're all just like, oh, maybe we lose this round. Oh, no, that's another headshot. They need to get through that to where they are the ones that are, that are dictating how this game flows. Nine to eight. It's not over yet. Oh, man, the focus right now. They're not messing around. Okay, it's still going to be another round here coming up of Pistol yeah. Sport G2. So still a chance for NIP to tie things up. But this net, the round that follows is going to be the big one where we're going to really see what G2 are capable of, if they're going to try to go aggressive and really just take the fight to NIP or if NIP are going to just turn up the heat. multi nade to mid-connector, I love to see it. But we've got some shenanigans here. This is sick. Does yep. this work? I mean, it works if nothing else to give them the information, right? Yeah, they heard that too. That's the thing. I think Hampus is close enough to hear those footsteps and that wards off the rest of NIP. Yeah, he's worried, you can tell. Good little check here for Hampus. Doesn't want to be in a position where they suddenly rush onto the A-bomb site and find a stack. So, yeah, I can appreciate this play from him. Down below, and he's going to find Hunter. Good kill. We'll see if that's going to start to draw people back from the A-bomb site. We've still got Nico and Nexer on this double set about here. Classic headshot position for Nico to just click that deagle away. And they're going to bring the bomb up here. There is a world. There's a crazy universe out there where he just gets a couple of kills and the whole round changes. He's got some backup with him. 50 seconds, that's a good Molotov to force him a little bit further back. There's one of them. Oh, the follow-up as well. He's looking for the triple 45 seconds. They're all over him. Grenades left and right, but he lands a third headshot. Back for more, he finally goes down. They've taken the raid boss, but now there's only 35 seconds, two on two here. Linus to pick up the bomb, Plopski inside of the site. And Jax with a guess he'll find the kill on Plopski. This is not good for NIP. Linus is on his own. 24 seconds and they're rushing him down. Oh, you can feel the panic. You can smell it in the air. He gets the one kill. But Amanek on top to take him down. Look at them. Fired up on the G2 side. It is 10 to 8. And they steal that round right from under NIP. The spirit of confidence. You can see him with Andrews. You called it. It's almost as if you summoned him. Say Nico three times real fast. I mean, just look at this. The headshots are so sick. This is what he's always capable of with the Deagle. This is why he dropped Nico and Deagle. He'll come up with a big round like that in the match. Put your team right back in the mix. A round early. That's supposed to be just a round of Nico. And Nico makes it happen. And there it is. Amanek with the opening kill on Hampus. Kicking us off. And G2 in the double digits with the aggression. Back to bullying. That was supposed to be the confidence building round. That's the round that should have set it up for NIP to really get back in the game and it gets taken away. This time you said they lose hampers, device also down to 10 health in the middle. Should early fight against the M4 there. So they're not feeling confident in this round either. Everything right now that NIP are trying, everything is difficult. It's just, it's a struggle. Smoking that window up, but the bomb leaning its way to the other side of the map. So they're gonna Start to walk away from this. Hunter and Jax inside of that B bomb site. They have some needs to work with. Hunter, at least with the Molotov. That could be pretty deadly if NIP throw both their smokes inside. Then they won't be able to extinguish the Molotov. And that can slow them down enough that backup can get there. So let's just see what the timing is. 
NIP, they're getting close. They might not actually signal it. Here comes the first swing and a clean entry. Plopsky exploding Hunter and Jax now down here on his own. Backup needs to get there quick. And Nico, he's actually right behind, but he himself didn't get overwhelmed. This is a little bit of a scary position. He's going to get the kill there. And Amanek was behind him as well, covering Rez. So now it's turned back in favor of E2. One versus three here for Plopsky. And there's not enough time. He just, it, this is almost impossible. They don't have to come for him, but they will. Nexa will take him down. It is 11 to eight in G2. That was close, but they're so solid right now. It's establishing dominance, right? When you don't need to go take the fight, but you do anyway. You don't let him get comfortable. As soon as Nico spots him and they know they have the positioning that he's at bench, that's it. His days or seconds are numbered at that point. <laughs> yeah. And this is a hard eco coming in from NIP now. They're not getting bomb plants, so their bonus money is not there yet. We may just get a straight up rush here from NIP. All right, never mind. It's going to be the mid split. But that would have been interesting had they just decided to try and get it over with quick. They Right now, the strategy for NIP is almost certainly to just try and bleed nades off of G2. But G2, when they don't see any nades in response, they should just put a halt completely to throwing anything out and just use the rifles to get rid of the ninjas. That was the most half-hearted run boost. That was just a <laughs> limp run boost. Yeah, and this kind of uh, maybe a, a quick metaphor for how things are on the NIP side at the moment. <laughs> Everyone's out of energy here. Tragic, but true. Yeah, I mean, again, it's hard to imagine just how devastating this feels. And you need a spark to get Ooh. back into it. You need something crazy to turn it around. Catching Nico here would maybe be it. Oh, the spray is through. He does so much damage. He re-smokes it again and is back for more. He'll at least get the one kill there, but the MP9 for sure will clean it up. Nexa, that is just fine. Odd kill on him. 12 to 8 as G2 just increasing their lead round for round. Guys, if you're tuning in at home, this is the difference between online CS Hell yes. and LAN CS. You can have shenanigans like that online where there's no fans to give it away. As soon as the fans, you can do whatever you want, but the fans, you're still going to sense it as a player when the fans start to start to get excited about something. Of and course. that's the difference between playing online where you're comfy at home and there's no tells, there's nothing to give it away, and so you can go for the KD and clutch or whatever, and playing on LAN where the fans are that extra, that sixth man that you always have to take into account. With yeah. what you're doing, they may give it away. And so that little stack there from Nip, yeah? They said, Nico's too long at the tooth, dude. He's been playing line too oh, long for that. Yeah. He's gonna know, so wait, 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 something's up. That's it's, sick, it's, but that's a part of it. That's a part of Land CS. That's what makes it so special. It is different, right? And if you're not used to it, then you're not even gonna know to expect it. Yep. 12 to eight, 21st round is coming up. G2 well on their way. Four rounds away from the semi-final here at the Major. That would be amazing for this team. They've really had some big struggles throughout the year, but they've been powering up all the way through, and it's paying off in a big way. I think many people, probably myself included, had kind of written them off maybe as a strong contender just because of what we saw earlier in the year. That might have been a big mistake. 21st round here, NIP just Poking into the B-bomb site, not a serious attempt, but it's worth trying. Wanted to see if they could find an early kill. It's just seeing if uh, G2 were cutting any corners over there. Not throwing the proper nades to stop any early aggression. And well, G2, you know, we're down to a minute, and they hardly have any nades left to speak of, in fact. So, Nip have a distinct advantage there. Single smoke left on Linus. But plenty of flashes and a Molotov on device. So they have options here in IP. Now it's a question of whether or not they can push forward onto the bomb site. 50 seconds left on this clock. Oh, this is gonna, this, the timing here from Hampus. Yep. Oh, he just makes it out. I don't think they can spot him now. But there's two on the other side, and they must have seen something there. Next, it goes down, and now NIP, they've got no chance to go all in, but it's already been red. The defense has already locked this down. Five versus three. NIP, there's no way through here. They've got everyone to fight on that other side. Device, a little bit of a jump to get the kill, but they're all facing, they're all stacked on top of each other, and they're gonna get wiped out. Next set with a strong triple kill, and G2 on 13 rounds. G2, you have three rounds off of winning this map and progressing to the semifinals. So close, such a close run thing. Nip are not out of it yet, but this is so difficult now, Anders, because they're the ones who are gonna have to come up with the Deagle magic. It's a round of eco that they're staring down the barrel of. 
It's with G2 playing this disrespectfully, where they're willing to just take fights anytime, anywhere, we're coming for you. <laughs> yeah. That does not bode well. No, oh, it doesn't. Nico just charging Palace, though. Outrageous. Just sending a message saying, this is done. You're not going to have much Ooh. of a chance. Strong kill for Device in return. Once again, if Device can just find Nico on the map every round... Yeah, he's got his number. You'll get a kill, right? Device will get a kill if he can just run into Nico. This would be one of those rounds, if you could find a way to win it, that could start to spark something like a real comeback. Because it's not like there's that deep of a bank on G2. They can obviously buy in the next round, but it's possible here that if they could win a couple of back-to-back -back rounds in IP, they could start to get back in the game. So a lot of ifs in thinking about it, but it's, it has to start somewhere. Amanek looking down the middle, trying to get that shot on Rez jumping around, calling it in for Hunter, saying, well, maybe. Yeah, I'm glad that Hunter doesn't overextend, though. Keep the focus here. You're, you're so close. For a second, I thought the Mad Lad was just going to jump down there. Well, now Jax is going to be put to the test, but he has a Molotov, and he can actually... If he gets the timing down right, he can just throw it and just close the round. They're going to get everyone here. Bit of a chance. That's some nice tapping for Hunter, and he's going to find a double kill. Rez and Linus trying to fight their way back, but not going to happen here. Rez on his own, and the rest of the team has started to show up inside of the bomb site. It's going to be a 14th round for G2. They are just moments away. Triple kill for Hunter. Timeout being called now. I can't really blame them. No. I mean, you have to, if you end this map in your nip and you have a timeout left, you've done something wrong at this point, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you have to have used everything possible because this is it. You're facing elimination. You're two rounds away from going home. And they don't have to go far, Anders. That's, that's a good point. They don't have to go far. Dad, I'm, I'm not sure home. that's much of a comfort right now, <laughs> but you are right. Oh, man. 14 to 8 timeout. They had a couple of seconds here to discuss how do we want to do this? What is the weakness? Is there anything we could do to shut this down? The problem is, again, it's pretty much everyone on G2 that's playing well. They don't, there's no weak link right now on that CT side. No. No, there really isn't. Everybody's snapping shots. I mean, no, no matter where they go, they're getting tested. It's clear that G2 have the advantage, the heavier firepower, and now they're going through the aggression as well. Underpass with the AWP. That's so sick from G2. Talk it, about the pressure play. It is, right? It's, it, again, that they've got their hands around their necks, and they're not going to let go. Keep on guessing here for G2 if they can find a new avenue for an entry into the round. Jax. Playing behind the smoke could get a bit awkward if he somehow just goes straight down, because then, yeah, they're right behind them, but they're at least going to get the bomb plant here in IP. Smokes, Molotovs are out. Jack's playing it cleverly, but he's now down on the bomb side with a grenade in hand. How is he not dead yet? Finally going to get caught. Plopsky spins around. He nearly himself was going to get killed then, and it should be a bomb plant. Device, he hears them. I think he knows that they're already there, and now he definitely does. The Molotov will give it away, so... That underpass play not playing out just yet how they wanted it to. And Device is going to Molotov that up, saying, nope, you're not going to get through here just yet. Nico working the other side by the market. Here's the flash through Device. He just runs and gun, but Hunter he gets the kill on Device. That is outrageous. They're fighting for every round right now, G2. They're not going to give this one up easy. Plopsky, he's covering the window, but Nico, he is just a laser beam, taking everyone down, and it's going to be the round. They're right back into it. What a ridiculous retake from Nico. 15 to 8. G2, a single round away from the semifinals of the major. A match point, seven of them. And no more timeouts for Nip to call. This is it. We're getting a bit of a replay here. Hunter, that was the perfect pop flash thrown in. Hunter was able to take full advantage of it. And Nico, just too good. The headshots are all there for him. There it is. And man, it must feel good for Nico right now to be in winning form once again. It's hard to even it's hard to even overstate how hard it is to win that retake. They were so far locked out. There would be two of them were being blocked by device on that on that Molotov. And that could that could have kept going for a while. Wow. Chance have begun and you guys have got to give Nip your energy because they desperately need it now. <laughs> Seven <laughs> rounds in a row is what they need to force overtime. It's possible. They can do it. Yeah. I mean, anything is possible at the Major. That's what we've learned so far. Mexa, nice clean entry there for Rez. Brilliant. But Nico is still in the bomb site. That makes me real worried for NIB. 
Oh man, smoking it off, Amanek. Not quite sure if they might be sneaking through. They're in the middle as well, yeah. Hunter gonna spot that out, so that'll give some information over. The device nearly dies. That's a deep nade. Good catch. Hunter taking down Hampers. They want to try to see if they could maybe surprise him. It's back into a four on four now. They are bringing the bomb over on the other side, and Hunter, he is just in the right position. He's going to hear the flashes. He knows what is coming next. Molotov is falling down behind him, and he's going to burn alive. That's a nice entry, a little bit unorthodox. And covering the middle, G2, they realize, in terms of the weapons, they have so much money, but still, all we need is one out of the next seven rounds. It's not worth it. Yep, exactly. That's exactly the way to put it. Because they have three guys with 9,000. They lose this round, they'll get some bank, the rest of them as well. But this is going to be a round on the board, and that's all they're telling themselves at this point. One round at a time. It's the only thing you can say, it's the only way you have a chance, is if you think about it one round at a time. If you think, oh man, we need six rounds in a row, it's just too much. Yeah. If you just one round, cancel out, just play the game, man, this is going to be brutal though, because now that's it. Threat is just a bystander like the rest of us. He can't say a word can't help the team it's all on those five players on that stage right now yeah they are on their own in that sense another round being picked up adding it nine to 15 one down six to go g2 fans getting hype for good reason 20 kills on nico 19 on nexa I mean, I guess we shouldn't be surprised anymore by Nico having these performances, but again, it gets progressively more difficult as you go through the tournament, and playing in front of the crowd is always going to be more tricky. Oh, 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 oh. oh, proactive stuff as well. Bit of a peek here from Nexa into Ramp, just getting a little bit of information behind that. Doesn't run into Blobsky, but this is... A decent spread here from NIP trying to cover all of the bases, but they may try and accelerate here and actually pick up the pace a little bit. They're not letting G2 get too comfortable. Although G2, man, they are actually just going to be committing to the safe side, aren't they? Yeah. They have a very good rotation. Hard to stop them because they're inside of the bomb site. So many, many of the smokes you're going to be throwing here to try and take the A bomb site will land behind the G2 players instead of blocking them out. All right. That's aggressive. Plopsky goes down. Nico finding his 21st kill, and that is not a good sign. Under a minute now, the bomb starting to slowly draw back. You have to be real careful. If Nico gets Linus here, the bomb is actually stuck on the ramp, and he knows it as well. He's trying to be the last man in. Nice headshot from Device and Rez to pick up Jax. It's looking pretty good right now, but it's not a job done yet. Two on two now, as Hunter will pick up the kill on Hampers. The bomb being attempted once again. Are they for... No! Airstrike on Lean if they take him down in device. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's going to get a quick spray on Hunter and will keep the dream alive for NIP. And a quad kill for device in that round to keep his team alive in this run. This is it, the true test of his medal. Whether or not he can be that hard carry for NIP when they need him most. And full focus there from NIP, or from device as well. No fist bumps on that side, just keeping it all dialed in. I've, I thought that was 100% over when that nade lands. That probably should have been the end. Yeah, 15 to think, 10. 100% thinking the same thing. And that's going to be a little bit frustrating for me, so you can be sure of it. Oh, they're going for more aggression, and Rez is ready for it. Double spray, shutting them down. You gotta be careful with getting too predictable with the aggression as well. If they expect you to try and keep making plays here, G2, round after round, it's gonna be hard to pull those off. But I do still like the G2 are being progressive, so I mean, it's tough. I mean, this is where you wanna see that same level of care and focus from NIP, right? Five versus three here. Don't throw this away. Don't give them a chance to get back into this round. It all counts right now. Their major lives are on the line here. Hampers. Oh, that's a nice and clever position for Jax. He's just able to look over the smoke. And that'll give them another kill. Hard rotate coming in here from G2, though. They need to cover a lot of ground, and they may be too late. Yeah, probably will be. The, the bomb is in last on connector. That made me a bit worried, but yeah. they're going to find a way to get through, and that should be fine. And again, G2 realizing 
the way we lose this now is if we run out of cash. That is the that is the number one way to, to end up in overtime here is if you just don't have the money. So saving, it makes sense. It's going to be an 11th round for an IP. Yep, sets it up for that following round. And now we're kind of running through the gamut of uh, aggression, of aggressive plays from G2. One place they've had success pushing aggro, though, is Palace. Nico's won a duel up there already. So I'm curious if they decide to go there next, if they keep trying to push these extremities, because they went to mid last round. Yeah. And so that could be the next option here for G2. If they keep three guns alive, including that AWP, it's actually boding pretty well here for G2, because then they don't need to force. They can just drop a couple of guns. They're going to be pretty well equipped. So you could elect to go for the aggression again. It may depend on spawn. So we'll see how this lines up, uh, how G2 spawn looks going into this next one. And they do have a decent one. Man. So far, so good. 11 to 15 as we go into the 27th round. Awesome. <sighs> there we go. Too. We're back, Andrews. This is it. The lands are back. I can't believe it's been... The earth is healing. Slowly but surely, yeah. Oh, interesting. And it's G2 calling a tactical timeout. Well, I'm sure Thread is going to be happy about that. Getting the chance to chime in here with the players. Yeah. What do you do? They've just won three in a row here. One of them, a one versus one at the end, or a one on two technically for device. That's the kind of play that can get a team fired up. We, you, you, I agree, we didn't see crazy reactions, but obviously, you win a clutch like that, the team is feeling it a little bit more of those. Something, anything to hold on to right here, as they almost slip out of the major. 27th round is coming your way. Rand's playing up in the A holes on his own. Well, the rest of them are out on the board to be bomb side. Not out yet, but certainly thinking about it. Ooh, clever. Oh, Klopsky, that's so frustrating. He was a split second off on that one. They gotta be careful that they don't make too much noise down on the A ramp with that double setup, because Rez will be able to hear that, and they're being real quiet about it too, which is probably a good thing. Now let's see if anyone is gonna be rotating out of A quick enough for Rez to shoot them in the back, because that is what they want. And right now, as you can tell on the new map, G2 do not care. They're not moving. They're gonna get the kill there, Rez. That was his opportunity, deep nade. Not gonna catch Nico, he's still alive in jungle. Now they're trying to get the bomb over, but only with two out of four players on NIP. Klovski goes down, and this is looking very disjointed here for NIP. They need to get back into this round. 45 seconds, Rez with the headshot, but it's a long way away. Device, he's had that bomb, just holding it on his own. His teammates are miles away, and they only have 35 seconds. NIP, this looks like a team that might have lost slight track of this round. If Device goes down, the round is done, and they are out of the Major. Rez sneaking in, trying to find the opening, but it's going to be Nexa to take him down. And now Jax, is he giving up on it yet? 20 seconds. He's the only one holding this site. If he dies, that might be a way back into it. Oh, but Device, he hits the ground, and now it's on Linus. 10 seconds, the bomb, no, it's up there. Oh, no, there might not be a way to do this at all. G2, they just need the kill, and there we go, the Samurai!